Penny Stock Billionaires, uh, we got an amazing, amazing show here today. Uh, you're seeing history made right before your eyes. Genius, GNS, this is literally, I, I've never seen anything like this, you know, in my entire career. You know, I've been, you know, in the market since I'm like uh, 13. It's a long time. This is like going into the 80s, right? I, I had my Series 3 license when I was 16. I had my Series 7 when I was 18. Uh, and I'm and I'm a little bit old, older than 21 right now, right? So, guys, I've been in the markets a long time. I've never seen anything like this. It's it's incredible. You're, we're watching history. So, what's going on, genius? <clears throat> this is a very unique short squeeze because here's what's interesting. Unlike other short squeezes, this one, you know, generally like look with AMC, you had the AMC, you had that guy Adam Aaron, you know, that grifter. <laughs> you got the uh, GameStop, another grifter. Uh, yet all these different guys, you know, they're all basically like corporate type guys. And just what here we have uh, in the case of this guy, Roger, Roger, what's his name? Ham Hamilton? Is it Hamilton? Let me see. Roger, Roger James Hamilton. This guy is, is actually sort of like a, a, a this is like a, a new type of CEO. This is the guy is basically like a like an influencer. It's almost like one of these YouTube guys, like a. Uh, uh, like a meet Kevin or a uh, Mr. Zach Morris from Twitter, like a fake guru, furu, like a Grant Cardone. But uh, let's look okay, at Grant Cardone. That guy actually has a legitimate business who, which makes money, right? As far as we know, I mean, you know, it makes money. Now, this guy, it's it's fascinating. Uh, we'll die, we'll do a little bit of a dive, but but here's here's what's amazing. Unlike AMC, unlike uh, GameStop, this guy actually has a following, or in theory, again, I'm looking here on Twitter, he's got 920,000 followers. That's a lot of followers for a company nobody's ever heard of, right? Uh, he's got 100,000 people on YouTube. By contrast, yours truly, the Penny Stock Billionaire Gang, now this is not my main account, this is like kind of like a joke account here. Uh, this account only has like, uh, you know, five guys. It might only have five, I think we only have five followers. Six, if you join right now, make sure you click the subscribe button. You could be number six and you learn how to find stocks that have 10x upside, you know, like, like we talk about in this book, 10 bagger blueprint. By the way, uh, this is available on Amazon. This is a proven system. Okay, everything I've learned in 25 years. Again, I'm not a genius. I've just worked with thousands of companies. Uh, you know, I've created over a trillion dollars in value. So I know exactly what works, what doesn't work. I've seen all stuff patterns develop. You know, I, I, I recognize patterns. That's all I know how to do. I know how to recognize patterns. You know, there's a famous saying, success leaves clues. I didn't make that up. I think that came from Tony Robbins, right? Great book, by the way. That totally changed my life. Uh, so success leaves clues. If you follow something that's working, repeat it, you'll be successful. So in this book, I write here, these are the, these are the systems. This produces success. This is how you find stocks that go up 1,000%, 10,000%. I've had, look at this over here. I've had 10 stocks in the last 24 months that went up between 10X and 50X. Okay, now. Where does genius fit into this? I, I've never seen anything like it. It really, it's, it's an unusual situation. So we got a short squeeze going on. What, first of all, let's kind of do an analysis of the business. Uh, actually, no, let me do a chart. Let me do a chart analysis first because the charts don't lie. And, you know, again, I, you know, a few days ago, I told you guys that this stock, when it was a dollar, I put out a tweet saying, this is going to go to $2. It went to $2. When it was $2, I put out a tweet saying, it's going to go to $5. Sure enough, it goes to $5. And I put out a tweet saying, this is it. It's the top. And it's gonna, it's all over. And yeah, the stock crashed at three dollars. By the way, it's not because of me. This, I'm, I'm just, this is like divine inspiration. It's not like I'm telling you where this, and, and people are following. No, I only have like you know three thousand followers on Twitter, whatever it is. It's nothing, right? So the reality is this. I, I think I have a sense of where the market is going. So I've been right three times. And I said it was gonna be all over, but then look, the stock bounced back, and I said, look, you know, it might be coming back. Now here's the thing. Here is what's amazing. I think. I think this thing could be ready for a major move. Now we got a very unique pattern here building up. Let me get let me get out of here. We got a very unique pattern building up with Genius. Um, I think the stock is ready. It, it's kind of building a base for breakout. We got a pennant formation. We've seen this before, guys. I've showed you this pattern with many of our client stocks. Genius is not a client because uh, they're not they don't qualify. Well, hey, well they haven't paid me to be quite candid. If the guy called me up, maybe I would do it. Uh, there'd be great PR. Um, here's the thing. I think this thing is building up for a breakout. Now, the MACD is about to cross over. The MACD is about to cross over. And that is a positive indicator. This is the day trader chart. This is for the low-life degenerate day traders out there. 15-minute chart. 
Uh, let's go to 30 minute. Okay, still looking bullish. We're gonna have a, probably a crossover. Now let's go into the one hour chart. Again, this is a stock you gotta watch. Literally, this is a, a very volatile stock. You gotta watch it literally by the minute because you know it can change on you. Like you know, okay, so I, you know we got a we got a uh, uh, what do you call it? A, a key reversal, upside reversal pattern forming here. I think this thing breaks out. I know it sounds crazy. I think this stock is going to break out again. I, I actually think this company is bullshit. I think this company is absolute garbage. But like I talk about in my book, do not confuse the stock with the business. The business is not the stock. The stock is not the business. Just because the business is garbage doesn't mean the stock could do well. We've had that. We've had companies that, that went up 20x, 50x. That, you know, they didn't have that much. And they went up 5,000%. Now, is Genius going to go up 5,000%? No, I don't think so. That's very unlikely. Now, Here's the thing. If you look at the daily chart, the daily chart is a little questionable. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, the, the, uh, we're losing a little bit of momentum here. It's like it's like the market is trying to find a balance. This is what it's telling me. It, it doesn't look that strong, but that intraday, that 15-minute, 30-minute chart tells me that we could have a possibility for breakout. I mean, so I would not be shorting the stock right here. I, if you guys are short the stock... I would not be shorting the stock right here um, because we may have a breakout. And if it does break, we could see a run up. This is going to sound crazy. We could see a run up to about $12, maybe even. I mean, we could see the mother of all short squeezes. This thing could pop to 15 bucks. It's possible. But if it does, get the hell out of this. Get the hell out of this. This thing is garbage. Is It's like a smoke and mirrors, okay? I'm going to do a dive into the fundamentals in just a second. Um, Okay, but short term, if you want to do a quick trade, you know, um, I would say I would say this is this is a tradable stock. If you're a low life degenerate day trader, <laughs> this is this is a good stock to trade. I mean, this has got action, right? You got action here. It can go crazy. Now, um, let me pull up something over here. Now, let me just pull up this up. Um, by the way, uh, you got to make sure you get this book, Ten Bagger Blueprint, tells you everything you need to know about. Getting rich with cheap stocks that can go up 10x to 100x. Now, what exactly? Where does let's see, if I had to analyze Genius Brands based on this book, what do I think of this company? Um, because I, I have now this mostly talks about low price stocks, which kind of this thing was. Now I think it's kind of um, I, you know, this guy fits into this. Uh, what do I, what's my chapter on? Uh, okay, there's a couple of different stocks. There is the the. This is weird. this is interesting. There's I I have number three. I have five different types of penny stocks. Uh, number two is the fake it till you make it, which is yeah, you know, guy who does roll ups or whatever, all sorts of smoke and mirrors. You know, putting something together. You know, we'll talk about one of those in another live stream. We see a lot of these fake it till you make it. They're not scams. These guys are just trying to hustle, trying to put together a couple of deals and you know turn some you know create something out of nothing. But really, they don't have anything. They got to fake it till they make it. And in order to do that, they really need to also promote the stock while they're doing it. The liquidity is important. Also, you got this weird category called the dreamer. I've come across a couple of these guys every once in a while. Uh, and I'll read the, I'll read exactly what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a, a unique type of CEO. Uh, okay, so okay. Uh, often the founder CEO is a lifelong entrepreneur inventor type. You might think of him as the crazy uncle with the new business ideas all the time. They may have a checkered past of hits and misses with previous companies that they took public which rocketed 500% or more, and then crashed to zero. They are very charismatic and spin a great story, but not good at actual execution, let alone management. These are basically story stocks that can skyrocket every now and then if the CEO is able to deliver. What's fun about these, these dreamer stocks is every once in a while, they do actually succeed. They do actually succeed once in a while. But these are like 100 to 1 long shot racehorses. That act, you know, so it's a long shot racehorse. I think this guy kind of fits into this criteria. I think this guy fits into this. It's 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 a unique character. I have not come across this type of character um, in my and again we've had thousands of public companies I've dealt with. Right, we've we invented the concept of CEO interviews. Wall Street Reporter, not this side, but Wall Street Reporter invented the con concept of CEO interviews, doing them in audio back in the nineties. We we're doing we did like ten thousand of them. Right. Um, I've come across a lot of CEOs. This type of guy is very unique. It's sui generis is the Latin word I would use, right? Uh, means one of a kind. So um, 
it, let's let's analyze let's do a deep dive let me pull up uh let's look at this guy's twitter account stand by one second let me just pop in here uh let me pop into the uh let's see pop into the twitter here. okay it's interesting right okay so this is this guy's twitter account now it's fascinating right he's got 900 okay here okay here's what's weird he's got 928,000 followers but he's following 650,000 to me that's a little bit suspicious it's basically like he's got like a bot or something that gets followers and this guy must have been doing it for oh he joined in 2008 like this guy is like a like an OG of Twitter like this guy's early bird um I don't know what this guy's been like I don't know he calls himself entrepreneur educator futurist you know any of these guys who call themselves futurists or all these like you know grandiose titles usually it's a scam usually it's bullshit. like any of these people call themselves futurists or this or that it's a lot of bullshit. you know what you know what's my other pet peeve my other pet peeve is when these descriptions these guys have is like somebody's got like a you know like I don't know like a seal of a company you know the first thing is his husband dad uh then you know finally then his like like if you look at Obama his thing is let me actually let me look this out I'm just curious Barack Obama Barack Obama wait how do you spell his name how do you spell his name Obama well look at this guy okay this is interesting guys you'll notice Barack oh he's got a picture with a white girl like okay I, okay he's trying to get the uh he's trying to get the whole thing so he's got he calls himself dad husband president citizen dad husband president citizen uh interesting uh well, this guy doesn't have anything let me see here how about uh Michelle Obama Michelle Obama what does she call herself girl from the south side former first lady wife mother dog lover always husband okay what okay how about Biden what is it? he's also probably like you know husband to Flotus. oh oh this guy actually is okay so first pro, 48th president okay it's okay it's a little, you know it's weird you have these guys who like first you know they're all like you know they put the wife in the pet oh husband great husband and finally no, your main listen the, your if you have a twitter campus people don't give a they don't give a fuck about your family they just want to know the business you're running they want to know what you're doing to make them money right uh let's see let's see so let's go back to our main man our main man roger hamilton uh roger hamilton let me see this guy let's go back to this guy roger hamilton Roger Hamilton um okay so future so he's got he's following 600,000 he's got it's suspicious it's probably a bot this is this is not real but it's interesting the guy has actually been on this thing a long time like he's uh you know he let me see what does he put out he's uh it's interesting right okay so so here is uh now let's take a look at the Twitter account then I'll then I'll jump back into the main idea here right excuse me not Twitter let's look at the YouTube account let's look at the YouTube account right uh let's let me stop this screen share and share screen share screen there we go okay okay so he's got 181,000 subscribers he's been on here uh like you know a decent amount of time 10 years he puts out Musk you know, making clear that as the richest man in the world he could I don't want to hear about this shit. okay so he's got a lot of videos right he puts out these videos I you know it's like weird shit like uh uh you know it, this is all like furu type stuff it's all this these fake gurus it's all like uh like a meet kevin or one of these other guys uh you know who's these other financial guys uh uh graham stefan whatever you know all these guys who are getting paid by ftx right all the guys who are pumping ftx you know and left all their audience holding the bag it's the same type as a hustle 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 it's like the gary v type of bullshit. hustle team time all this nonsense right uh all this nonsense um I don't know what the guy does okay now let's go into something more interesting right so so he's got a following I like this I like this because this could be leveraged to promote a stock which is very valuable none of these other guys have had this none of these other guys had this let's go into something more interesting how about this how about the SEC filings let's do some real fundamental work right there we go you know what they say the numbers don't lie right well the numbers do lie but okay uh okay so this is his uh latest filing uh pro forma genius pro, uh, pro forma okay so this is bullshit basically okay 
Um, okay. Uh, so, tw uh, so this is this is a little old, but okay. So, twenty-eight million. This is twenty-eight million in sales. He did. So he went from nine million in twenty nineteen to pro form, I guess, with an acquisition. So really, and that's really twelve, because this is, I guess, with an acquisition group. Oh, in order pro form group. So this is going to be a group. I, listen, I'm not an accountant. Okay, I don't know. This is, is this including acquisitions. Yeah, I'm a busy guy. I don't have time to read the whole the whole um, filing here. Come on, guys. I don't have time for this nonsense. I look at the charts. But let's look at 21. So it went from 9 million to 12 million with his core business. Um, okay, that's, that's. I mean, I guess it's okay. It's not nothing, you're not blowing the socks off anybody. But here's what's amazing. Your, 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 your cost of goods doubled, more than doubled, which is not good. So that's not good. That's not a good sign. In other words, your, your business went up 30%, but your cost of selling the stuff doubled. You know, it's like, okay, you're selling ice cream. You know, instead of selling a thousand dollars, you know, three years ago this year you sold fifteen hundred dollars of ice cream. But you know, last year that ice cream only cost you, I don't know, two hundred dollars. Now it's costing you, you know, six hundred dollars or something. It's not good. Now, total income loss. Okay, so law. Okay, so this guy is losing, you know, on a good day, four million dollars, based on that uh, twelve million sales. It's not good. His his losses are are. are increasing at a much greater pace. So his losses went from a million and a half to four and a quarter. That's not good, right? So the basically, look, it's a failed model, basically. That's what this tells you. It's a failed model. So what is this guy, but what is this guy doing? Uh, he says he's got entrepreneur education. Well, look, if you're going to educate entrepreneurs about how to make money, you should be making money yourself. No, I mean, I would think so. Why would I want to learn from an idiot? Again, success leaves clues, right? Like, like Tony Robbins says, success leaves clues. I want to learn from somebody who's successful, right? Why would I want to learn from a mooch bum who doesn't know how to make money, right? Roger Hamilton does not know how to make money. I don't know if the guy has ever made money. He's got entrepreneur resorts. I, this is, okay, now we're getting into this really, like, very, very sketchy stuff. Entrepreneur resort. Okay, like, I'm an entrepreneur, right? Like, you know, I'm going to go to a resort on my vacation to hang out with a bunch of Listen, when you go to these things, entrepreneur, you're not hanging out with the A-list, okay? You're hanging out with like wannabes. Basically, you go there, you're going to be laying at a beach at like some shitty place and some guy's going to be trying to sell you insurance or, you know, it's, it's like going to these networking meetings, you know, <laughs> which I remember I went, I went to one like years, the first time I ever, and the last time. But you see these things, these networking events, business networking events, what are they usually? If you've ever been to one, you got to go with, go to one to find out. It's basically people who are losers. I mean... You know, they're trying, I shouldn't say losers. Look, they're trying to make money. They just, you go there, they try to network to sell you shit. And basically, it's a bunch of people. It's like a, it's like a Turkish bathhouse. Everybody's trying to fuck each other, okay? It's, this is what this is. It's like, it's everybody's trying to sell you insurance or timeshares or whatever it is, right? And I, this is what I want to do on my vacation, right? Okay, so this, it's already sketchy. Uh, so he claims he's got two mil. okay, our mission. Okay, I love these mission statements. This tells you what the color. Okay, our mission: education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Nelson Mandela. Oh my God. Oh geez, this guy's like, oh, you know these grandiose mission statements, which are very vague. Changing the world. Oh, we're gonna change. Listen, anybody who wants to change the world, put your hand on your wallet. Make sure, make sure you know where your wallet is, because anybody who tells you they want to change the world. He's trying to take money out of your pocket. They're scamming you. They're scamming you. Uh, first, if you want to change the world, change yourself. Start with yourself, pal. Start with yourself. This guy, I think, is, is a mooch bum who somehow fugazied his way into this public company. And he doesn't know anything about running a public business. I mean, he's kind of, he admitted, he's kind of learning this on the go. On the go. He's learning this on the go. Um, where does it say? Here's what's interesting. He says he's got 3 million students. He's got 3 million students. Uh, where did I see 3 million students? So these numbers, I, I don't I don't believe any of these numbers. Um, okay. Uh, Pre-IPO had 2.6 million students. Okay. The pre-IPO, okay. If you got 2.6 million students and you're only making, uh, what's the number? 20 million? Is it 14? I don't know whatever the number is. Even if it's 20 million. If you got 2.6 million students, you're telling me you're making $10 a student? Come on, come on, man. What's this doesn't add up? Something here is is 
I, I bet those students are as legit as as Rogers Twitter followers. I think it's a fugazi, guys. I think this is a fugazi business. I think this is a, a massive fugazi. Now, here is here is the punchline. Here is the punchline. Let me let me get to the punchline in one second. Um, let me let me get out of the screen for one second. Uh, the punchline is this, my friends. I think this is a fugazi stock. I'm not saying it's a fraud. I'm saying this thing is going to be worthless because the whole thing doesn't it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. I think that he's buying some college antelope university or something like in bumblefuck uh, somewhere. I don't know. Death Valley count. Yeah. He's basically buying a diploma mill, right? He's going to, I, you know, the whole thing is like very grandiose visions Now here is the, here's what I like about this. Here's what I do like. This guy is a great scammer. Uh, and I mean that in a positive way. It's not meant in a negative way. The guys of he's like, he's like, unlike these uh, like boring stiffs from AMC and, uh, GameStop, all these. This guy's like a kind of a charismatic guy. You know, he's got this like uh, you know Australian accent. And by the way, the Australians are all like criminals. I mean, you know, the Australians basically those are people who were evicted from the UK. England sent all, all their rapists, murderers, robbers to Australia. They wanted to get them as far away as possible. So every all the Australians are basically descendants of low lives, and they interbred with the kangaroos. So it's like criminals and kangaroos bred and you know that's that's australia basically right i mean australia hasn't produced any Nobel prize winners right so this guy roger hamilton he's got this australian accent he's got like this little, like a bindi dot on his head so he's like enlightened or something i think it, no, it's like a some sort of mole or something in the middle of his head so but it's a subliminal thing because like you know in india the, the bindi dot like you know it says like you're enlightened or something i don't know i think that's what it means so like the buddha whatever it is third eye so this, this guy has got like a lot of these angles going now here's what i love he's able to do the short squeeze he's able to do a short squeeze because he's got a bunch of i think he's got enough followers i mean most of those followers are probably fake but if you got enough of them and you you're, you're out there what he what he's been able to do though is amazing i gotta give this guy credit he's been able to kind of catalyze all these um you know retail investors these suckers you know suckers absolute suckers and, and ceos of failing companies into this whole short squeeze conspiracy uh naked short investigation oh we're gonna hire a um a former fbi guy like oh, this is the big the stock moved on this news that they hired some some mooj bum from the fbi um and by the way we know about the fbi right that's the russia conspiracy that's the whole thing that the guys fell for the russia hoax you know, that's the deep state. That's J. Edgar Hoover, the cross dresser. I mean, that's uh, Ruby Ridge. Uh, that's Waco. They killed all. Those. So the FBI has a very sordid history in America, just so you know. Now, he hires this, this guy, right? This this Fed, a former guy. I mean, these guys are all corrupt, right? So he hires this guy, like he's going to lead the investigation into naked shorts. Who cares? Naked shorts, big deal. Listen, guys, here's what you got to understand. I talked about this before. Short selling. You know, I, I I have had to fight short sellers on behalf of my clients, right? This is part of my job, right? I talk about this in the book, Ten Bagger Blueprint. You read this, you get rich. Um, by the way, click the like and subscribe button right now. Like and subscribe to this video. Um, or the unlike. Uh, here's what you're gonna say: short sellers are part of the ecosystem. It's like nature, right? You have wolves, you got rattlesnakes. If you get rid of the wolves. You know, you're gonna have park, you're gonna have forests overrun by deer, and they're gonna deer are gonna come to your house. We have this in the suburbs right now. I talked about this in another video. Yeah, because the deer, the you know, they're meant to be eaten by some of the by the wolves. Some of them are meant to be eaten, right? You gotta have a balance in nature, otherwise, you know, they're gonna breed like crazy and uh, you know they're gonna be take over the population, right? Or snakes, right? Everybody hates snakes. I hate snakes, you know. Um, but you know, if you kill a snake, I mean if you kill the snakes. The snakes eat the rats, they eat the, the rabbits, well, whatever it is, rodents, all this shit, right? If you kill them, uh, you'll have, you know, you'll have the rodents take over the pop, the whole country. They'll eat all the crops. You'll have rats crawling up your ass uh, in your house, right? I mean, you're going to be over and by, we need, we need these things, right? The short sellers perform a very vital function. They keep the market honest, right? Again, I talk about this in the book. About short selling. Look, there's two types of short sellers. There's the guys who basically are, you know, they're just neutral. They're, they might be long one stock, they short something else, which I think is kind of a weaker company. 
Then you have guys who are activists. You know, they think, hey, this thing is, is a scam. It's a scam. And they short the stock. And, and you have two types, though. You have the guys who really believe something is a scam. They short it. Um, they tell people about it. Then you have another type, which is kind of a dishonest short, where they short a stock. But then they put out, like, fake information and fake reports. Like, Hindenburg Research was involved in that. That guy was involved in these short and distort campaigns. The guy's a, the guy's a bit of a fraudster. Uh, the Hindenburg Research guy, he came after one of my clients. It was a very, very dishonest report. And we had to give him a little bit of a squeeze. He made money. I mean, the stock dropped. Obviously, it came back. It went up 10x from the bottom. But <clears throat> the, the point is this. Um, I think that short sellers are vital for the market. And look, generally, they're, they're attacking stocks which they believe are overvalued. That That's the reality, right? That's the reality. Um, and, you know, you can't blame them for, for attacking this guy's stock. You know, he was trading at a, at a, at a you know, at the peak at a, what is it? A, uh, uh, geez, where the stock came out. Like, it, I mean, it, it dropped straight down. I mean, it just came out and it just shit the bed. I mean, this thing just like, like plummeted. Uh, well, here's the thing you got to understand. This guy, Roger, doesn't know anything about capital markets. So he doesn't know how to create market support. He doesn't know how to do promotion. <clears throat> he doesn't know how to do any of that stuff, right? Or nobody trained him how to do that. He thinks he knows, but he doesn't, whatever. Like, But here's the thing. So that's why the stock plummeted and you got short sellers came out. And who cares about short the stock? I mean, this thing was trading at a valuation of what, a billion dollars when it was 20? I mean, like crazy valuations. Uh, this thing is worth, this thing is basically worthless. I mean, they got a, a, a questionable business. If you got 2 million students, you're only doing 10 million and 12 million in sales. It doesn't add up. It does not add up. Those are suspicious numbers. Just like Roger's Twitter account is suspicious. He, <clears throat> you got 900,000 followers, but you're following 600. It's like, it doesn't make sense. I mean, come on. Something is, it doesn't add up. I mean, like even my Twitter account, like, I mean, I, I think I have a couple hundred people. I don't even, I don't know if I follow them, whatever. And then I have a couple thousand followers, right? That's normal, right? <clears throat> Somebody who's big may have a hundred thousand followers, and they're following five hundred people or a thousand, whatever it is. Not following one for one. It does. It, it to me, it's very, very sketchy. Um, <clears throat> but here's what's amazing. So this guy has done something amazing. He's been able to catalyze. He's been able to catalyze all these uh, grifter CEOs, uh, like CRTD, this guy Berta, whatever it is of failing companies who, who their stocks are being shorted, right? Because the stocks should be shorted. They should be worth, they're, they're worthless companies, right? So he's sort of like, we're creating this movement. We're going to create this movement. <clears throat> this guy, is, it's fascinating. He's sort of like this kind of um, um, messianic type of figure, like a very charismatic type of guy. He's like the Jesus of uh, penny stocks, basically, right? <clears throat> I, I bet this guy went to uh, either Scientology or Landmark which was the old Est. I guarantee this guy was a, was definitely a, um, probably spent a couple of years a landmark form. I don't know if they call this as landmark or, Est, you know, whatever it is. <clears throat> I bet this guy has had some experience that because he's got the whole, like, you know, the whole thing. This is, <laughs> it's it's a fugazi, guys. Okay, so he's been able to catalyze all these guys into saying, hey, we're going after the short sellers. And and the problem is this, here is my issue with this whole thing. Let me get, now we're, we're 28 minutes into it. So I'll give you my problem. Short sellers do a vital job. Uh, do not think, those of you investors watching, don't think for a second that, okay, we're going to buy these stocks because we're part of a movement. We're going to stick it to the man. We're going to stick it to Wall Street, uh, the big hedge fund, the fat cats. The <coughs> Guys, don't be delusional. You're, you're cannon fodder. You're cannon fodder, basically. You're like pawns. You're getting pawned. You're getting pimped out by these CEOs. Just like Adam Aaron cashed in a bunch of stock, I mean, of a company that was failing, this guy's gonna cash in a bunch of stock. You guys are being our pawns, right? The only reason you should buy a stock is to make money. Do not buy a stock because you're part of a movement or hey, we're gonna be part of something great. I think the problem is this. I I think that here is the issue. I think that the people who are buying these stocks, you know, we, we've had you know over the last fifty years in America, the Western world, you know, you have a decline of of uh, of uh, of people, uh, you know, uh, of of religion, right? So instead of, you know, again, like you know, very you know, uh, church attendance is down, all this stuff. People are basically, it's, it's becoming a very secular society, right? 
So how do people replace this? How does the Western person replace religion? Which actually religion, whatever your religion is, at the end of the day, it serves an important function for the most part, right? It serves an important function, right? And uh, the people who don't have religion in their lives, who don't have any sense of God in their lives, they need to seek it out. They need to seek a sense of belonging, to be part of something bigger than them, to find meaning in their life. So either they go to the gym, that's a big thing in, in LA, right? That's their that's their church. They go to like spin spin class or whatever it is. You have all these girls go to spin class or yoga. Yoga is the other thing because they think, oh, it's spirit. Somehow they haven't they haven't confused that it's some sort of spiritual practice and oh, it's my ritual. You ever see this word ritual being used in that word? Like ritual, like because people are missing that. They miss people are have a spirit are have a, this vacant hole, this this they're missing spirituality in their lives, right? That's where a grifter like this guy Roger, who understands that, by the way, he plays on that, right? He plays on that whole thing because he went through the whole landmark or Scientology thing. One of those two, I guarantee you. Um, and um, the guy's very good. By the way, I'm just you know, I'm not saying the guy's a fraudster. I'm not saying there's any fraud involved. There could be. I don't know if there is. I don't think there is. Um, I think he's just a uh, one of these guys. One of these. He's like the dreamer type of CEO. Who's got some cockamamie company? I don't know, like how real, like what's real, because it doesn't make the numbers don't add up to me. You have two million students and you only make twenty million dollars revenues, ten dollars per student. What? What? I mean, like, what are you selling? I, I don't get it. Like, I, it doesn't make sense. Um, now, um, what do you call it? So. Basically, these guys, guys, don't believe in this. You should not be buying these stocks because you think it's part of a movement. You're being used. You're being pimped out, okay? Um, these stocks, for the most part, they're being shorted for a reason. They're going to go to zero, right? For the most part. Um, I believe this company is going to go to zero. Uh, unless, but here's the thing. This guy, you know what? This You never know. Here's the one thing you never know. Um this guy might just kind of luck out, like if the stock really pops. And by the way, Roger, if you're watching this, I want to get you got to send me a consulting fee because I'm going to give you some information. If the stock pops, the guy should do a big raise, right? Raise a ton of cash, maybe do some acquisitions, and that'll buy him time. Now I know eventually the guy will blow it because this guy, you know, the guy. I think the guy's a loser. You know, he's like, he's crazy, not crazy, but he's like, you know, he doesn't know how to run a business. He's a dreamer. He's a dreamer. The guys, he claimed calls himself a futurist, right? Uh, so I think this thing is going to go to zero eventually. But if the guy is smart, and when the stock pops to like fifteen bucks, if it pops, do a big raise, raise a ton of cash, raise a hundred million, and uh, you know, then uh, buy some cash flow generating business. I don't know, buy real estate, buy uh, mobile home parks. That's what you should do. You should buy mobile home parks that generate a ton of cash flow. That would be a genius move. But the business itself. I, it doesn't make any sense. I think it's a bullshit business. I think a lot of these guys that he's kind of put into this little group. By the way, there's, there's, he, they did a little video or something, a short selling, some movie. They're making a movie about short squeeze or this or that, and they're trying to do a, a GoFundMe. They're trying to rate. Guys, don't fall for this. It's a scam. It's a scam. These people are deadbeats. Uh, I mean, they're trying to raise money for a movie about short selling. Guys, it's a scandal. Look, short selling is good. It's good. Remember, like Gordon uh, Gecko said, greed is good. Greed is good. It's the American way. People are motivated by greed, right? Short selling, short sellers are the counterbalance to those greedy forces in all of us, right? That keeps the markets honest. Without short sellers, the markets would fall apart. By the way, short sellers don't attack successful companies. They generally attack companies that are losing money, right? That have gotten the price a little bit overvalued, a little, just a little bit maybe, right? It's possible. And that's when they attack. Now, sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes they're wrong, right? In this case, I don't think these guys are wrong. Uh, but bottom line though is I think, okay, to wrap up, I think we could see a, a tomorrow a bit of an epic short squeeze. However, again, this thing is is got no real underlying value. It's 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 garbage, basically, guys. It's absolute garbage. Um, but what this guy has done is really unique. I've never seen anything like it. He's been able to kind of cat bring together all these different CEOs, like these loser losers, all these loser CEOs. That's what these guys are for the most part. Some of these loser filmmakers or into this like a little little a uh, 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 freak show, a little touring freak show. He's got the bearded lady. 
You got, uh, you know, the guy with two heads. <laughs> you got you got all these freaks. He's got this band of freaks. It's like the Howard Stern whack pack. If everybody ever, I, you know, by the way, Howard Stern, had, that's another loser. That guy has been funny, like, since 1995, maybe. I think I used to listen to that on, on the radio in the nine, early 90s. That guy's, you know, but he had this group of characters, these these wackos, these weirdos, right? That's what these guys are. These this group of these guys who are part of this little union of uh, a short squeeze union. They're all deadbeats. They're all they, the one thing they all have in common is their companies do not make money. They should be put out of business, okay? Because they're sucking up your money. You know what? Let me tell you what's happening. By the way, when you buy a stock like this because you want to support the company, you want to support Roger Hamilton, whatever it is, you know what you're doing. You're supporting the guy's lifestyle. You're supporting, uh, you know, his his private yacht, his, you know, his his private jet charters, uh, the yacht. I don't know. I think he had a, on his Twitter thing. He's got some boat with. I think those looks maybe it's an employee trip. I don't know. He's got some sailboat or some bullshit. Uh, believe me, guys. If there's an audit on his, like, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, travel entertainment expense, I'm sure we'll find some very suspicious things. I'm quite certain there will be things that you know pop out as like, wow, this is not normal for a small company. Um, it, look, all these guys are basically, they're using you for when you buy these stocks, they're, they're taking your money, they're giving themselves bonuses, putting it in their pocket. They're going to, you know, five, six star hotels. You know, they got five hookers showing up in their room. They're paying top dollar for those hookers. They're not even, you know, they're not even negotiating. They're getting the girls for like, you know, who are saying, Hey, 10 grand. Right. And they say, Hey, okay, I'll take five of you. <laughs> That's what these guys are doing. Right. And, you know, they're buying, you know. 20 kilos of cocaine, uh, going to a hotel in Dubai. Um, and that's, that's, that's where your money's going. Again, I'm not, I'm not saying Roger is doing that. I don't know. Maybe he could be, I have no idea. Uh, but uh, you never know. You never know with these guys, right? All I'm saying is this, uh, you by investing in these stocks, you are not supporting anything. You're not part of any movement. You're a loser. Okay. Get this through your head. You're basically a guy sitting at home. You got, uh, uh Cheetos dust on your, on your t-shirt at home in the basement you know, because you've been jerking off and you got the Cheetos dust, who knows what else you got on, you're playing video games and then you think you're part of a movie. You're not, all right? Go, you know, find the religion or go to, I don't know, go to church or something, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Go. You know, this is this is, this is is filling a spiritual void in your life. Being part of a movement of these companies, it's filling a spiritual void in your life because your life is empty and, you know, this is Roger is your Jesus, Okay. Roger is, um, you know, he's a scammer. Basically, he's a scammer in, in a polite way. I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not saying he's a fraudster. Just to be sure, you know, I'm not saying he's a fraudster. I'm saying the guy is, uh, you know, he's a hustler. He's a hustler. He's like an Adam Newman type of guy uh, from uh, WeWork, right? Very similar, but it's the same thing. Except that guy, WeWork. Wow, I, I saw one of his interviews. Man, this guy takes it to like three levels. I actually, it's funny. I actually, and I know him through. Actually, no, I'm not. I, I don't know. I know. One one degree of separation. I know, like somebody who had close dealings with him when he was first in New York, and the guy was busted, and he promised to donate to a certain charity, and he never followed through on his donation. So, Adam, if you're watching, um, I'm talking about the place in Midtown on Fifth Avenue. You, you promised to give money to, you never gave to. I heard. That's what I heard. Uh, so, you know, uh, write a check. Anyway, uh, bottom line is, um, don't believe the hype. These, these, th these, these things are absolute garbage. Uh, we may have a good day trading opportunity. We may have a good day trading opportunity in the stock. We may see a pop in the stock, but ultimately it is dog shit. It is toxic dog shit. It is like uranium. Um, you know, buying these stocks is getting like a, a uranium enema. Uh, it, it's a polonium. What's the polonium? That's what the Russians gave to the, the spy that they poisoned. It's like getting a polonium enema. Uh, when you buy these stocks, it's not it's not good. Um, but this is fascinating. I'm I'm actually glad this guy Roger is around because I've never seen anything like this. I think it's an amazing thing. This guy has actually been able to leverage his kind of like like little cult celebrity, whatever it is. I don't know how much of it is real or fake, and it, he's been able to galvanize like a little bit of a movement with these like losers. It's basically like uh, you know like a little cult, like a Jonestown. It's a Jonestown. It's exactly what this is. Uh, Roger. Uh, Hamilton is the Jonestown of, um, of penny stocks. And remember what happened with Jonestown? Look up Jim Jones, famous story, Jim Jones, the Jim Jones story, amazing story. Uh, you know, the story, you know, the, the, the saying, don't drink the Kool-Aid that came from him. Jim Jones 
started a cult. He was a white guy, but most of his followers were black in San Francisco. It's like a weird mix. Like this white guy from, I think he's from Detroit. I don't know where he's from, but he had this weird thing. He was able to get big political power. Nancy Pelosi, all those people, all those liberal Democrats, they all actually supported Jim Jones, right? Because Jim Jones was able to get them votes. He, he had a big voting block. So anyway, he took all his followers. He went to Guyana, right? They all took a plane to Guyana. And, uh, you know, some, I, something, something happened there. I think like some congressman came down there. Next thing you know, uh, next thing you know, he's giving everybody uh, cyanide into Kool-Aid and making everybody drink it. And uh, everybody who drank the Kool-Aid died. I mean, it's kind of sad because you had a lot of kids. I mean, like, you know, you had these people who really believed, right? You had children. I mean, it was like, it's a, it was actually tragic, right? Uh, but uh, Jim Jones is basically like this guy, Roger Hamilton. I think Roger probably would have learned a lot from Jim Jones. He probably studied Jim Jones. Guy, This guy is a pro. This guy, Roger, is, is very good. I mean, he's not like at the Adam Newman level. He's not like, you know, next. He's like a, he's like a very competent guy. It's like it's, it's like one of these guys you run into like a top salesman at like, uh, you know, Landmark or something or maybe like a Scientology guy. Uh like, uh, you know, like one of Grant Cardone's guys, he, you know, these guys are pros. I mean, by the way, if you ever meet the Scientology guys, amazing salespeople. I mean, like, it's very unique. I mean, I was actually almost tempted to take one of their courses because, I mean, I've seen, I've actually seen guys do very well with it. So, like, maybe it works. I don't know. I think uh, Jerry Seinfeld claims he took a course and another guy. And they said the, some sort of course. I think I maybe I may have to take one of their courses. Um they have a course, I think it's said communications, because I so I can speak better. Because I'm not, you know, I'm not that articulate, right? Maybe I, maybe I should join Scientology, right? All right, guys. Anyway, bottom line, this thing is a, is a garbage stock. Um, do not do not believe the hype. This is a dog shit stock. Uh, but we may have a good trading opportunity here. It may have a big breakout. The charts are telling us there's a breakout building up. We have the setup. We have a setup for a breakout. So this thing could break out tomorrow. Let me know what you think. Make sure you get this book, 10 Bagger Blueprint. Tells you everything you need to know to get rich with penny stocks.